So this is first off, I do I do have just have to say congratulations to you both for the movie. Just you must be so thrilled with the response of it that's been going so far. That's because it must must just be such a rewarding thing to kind of you know see people connecting with it like it have been. Clearly, I'm, I'm pleased. I mean, we've been working on this for so long uh, together. I think we started six, seven years ago. Yeah. Um, the, the first time. So to finally be here and show it to the world. And I also have to say that, you know, we showed it to the real Amy. Mm -hmm. And that was that was the screening that meant the, that meant the most to me. You know, um, when she approved, I felt good and felt like I could move on. Um, but yeah, of course, it's it's a big joy. And I'm, I'm extremely honored to, to show this to the world and to be able to tell Amy's story this way. You're yeah, just having been working on it for such a long time now, is it, is it weird that it is actually finally done and out of your hands and going out into the world? Is it kind of, does it, does it kind of come to the point where it's quite hard to let it go? Mm, I mean, I, I still think that I'll be thinking about this script in this movie in 10 years, but that, I mean, that's a, that's, I think, a sign that you've, that you're happy with it, that you've done well. Like, I'm, I, I've spent 10 years on it. Um, so, yeah, it's 10 years well spent, I think, thanks to you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. But, and, and yeah, I agree, you know, it's not like I like to let go. At some point, not yet, <laughs> I'll have to force myself to let go and start to do something else. But but right now, to be in this, to be united mm -hmm. with, with Christy here today and to, 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 to show it to everybody is part of it. And, and, and especially in a story like this where Amy is out there, um, it's a very fulfilling to, to share it with the audience. Mm. I guess kind of taking things right back to the very beginning of the whole process for the both of you. Um, what was it about the story that kind of spoke to you in the first place? Because it's an amazing story, but it is quite is a really harrowing one as well. And just it must have been sort of fascinating, but also quite challenging to figure out how you're going to make it work as a movie. I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was Charles Graber's book that um, landed on my desk, and I read, and you know, I was expecting one thing, and I was sort of blown away by how well written it is, and also just the story I'd never heard. It, a, a most, America's most prolific serial killer happened in my lifetime, and I never knew about it. And I'm the kind of person that does know about that kind of stuff, because <laughs> I'm weird. Um, and the book in itself, you know, you've obviously got the harrowing story of Charles Cullen, but then you've also got Amy, and you've got what she did. And I think, you know, seeing a, a working class single mum be a superhero made it undeniable for me that I wanted to work on it. And what was it for you, Tobias? It was definitely that, that potential that drew, drew me to it. Um, reading it, I realized that it was a story about my mom as well. It was about these very strong, <clears throat> lonely moms out there. My mom raised two boys and, and, and were the warm hands in the, in the Danish system. And um, I could see her in it. And I felt like if we could, if we could tell uh, a superhero story about a real person, and inspire to the fact that it means something if you stand up against the system, if you insist on humanity, if you insist on charity. So that kind of became our pledge. We decided, let's try to make this film work as a thriller, but in a humane way. Um, and maybe that's why it took so long. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, you, you're saying like making it work as a thriller, and that was one of my thoughts watching it. It was like, you know, night shift, hospital lighting, it does work so well for atmosphere in this kind of movie and just like how was it when you actually on set like do you, do you get to the end of the day and just think god i really just you know you need to go and just blow off some steam now because it feels so intense when you're watching it well the fun thing is like it's always very fun to shoot a movie it's always you're there with so many great people that nobody else sees it's like a whole circle mm -hmm. of wonderful filmmakers around you and then the darkness here made the set a little more intimate that I'm used to because, well, basically of darkness. Darkness inspires us to whisper a bit. So all the lines were set a little more silent um, than, than, than usual. And it also meant that we couldn't really see all the people around. So the actors felt even more close and alone in the world, which, uh, which helped us here. But um, I was at a point when I hadn't realized how we were going to shoot this, I thought it would be a really hard film for Eddie to play because he's like, have to dig deep into the darkness. And, and we ended up realizing that he's a very nice guy 85% of the time. So, so it was, it's just kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, it was super pleasant. He would just be charming Eddie Redmayne and then, you know, you'd rehearse, cameras would roll and then suddenly he was a serial killer, which was quite jarring. <laughs> quite jarring, but very impressive. <laughs> Better than him going method, I guess, in the circumstances. Uh, oh, yes, too method in this would have been problematic. <laughs> yeah. 
I guess kind of, um, just picking up on something you mentioned before, Christy, just um, saying that you weren't aware really of this story prior to reading the book. And like, that certainly was the case for me as well before watching the movie and you know, presumably therefore the case for a fair few people. So how would you hope that audiences respond to the movie kind of going in, maybe being kind of unaware of this story? Well, I mean, I think, well, I really hope audiences go in and, you know, see what Amy Lauren did and realise that you kind of don't need to be a billionaire in a bat suit to change the world, to save lives, to make it a better place. And don't be wrong, like, I love watching billionaires in bat suits, but you also need to have these kind of films out there where you realise, hey, I can aspire to something. I can aspire to helping make people's lives better. Um, and if they leave with that, I'll be very satisfied.